A good afternoon to every person, everybody. So, in the previous class, we were discussing about the synthesis, then the storage, then the action of acetylcholine with its destruction. So, this is a very brief diagram about that particular thing, especially the synthesis, the choline is uptoken into the uh, what you call as nerve endings by the sodium dependent uh, carrier, it is a rate limiting uh, steps. The hemical ionum is going to block this particular uh, step, whereas the vesemicol is going to inhibit the vesicular uptake. And when, a, when it is taken up into the exoplasm, it is the acetyl CoA from the mitochondria is going to join with the choline to form acetyl choline. Then this will be uptaken into the vesiculars. So the vesicular uptake inhibition is by vesamicol. Then the acetyl choline get released through exocytosis with the help of the calcium because the nerve action potential come to the nerve ending because of the depolarization and the cal calcium influx is there. Then the exocytosis occurs after the fusion of the membrane to that of the uh, what you call as the nerve terminal and botulinum toxin inhibit the release of acetylcholine, botulinum toxin release of acetylcholine. So, botulinum toxin is going to inhibit the acetylcholine for release so that the action of acetylcholine will not happen and flaccid paralysis will occur. And here the acetylcholine esterase is an enzyme which is going to destruct the acetylcholine uh, choline neurotransmitter within a fraction of seconds or very within 30 milliseconds and going to yield the choline plus acetate. So that is the destruction of the uh, neurotransmitter whereas after release the acetylcholine is going to act on both the receptors that is the muscarinic receptors and the nicotinic type of the receptor that is a very well understood phenomenon. So here what we have discussed is synthesis of acetylcholine then uh, the release of the acetylcholine then action on the post uh, synaptic cleft and the destruction of the acetylcholine in the cholinergic neurotransmission. Yeah, in the skeletal muscles, stimulation of motor nerve results in release of acetylcholine from perfused, uh, perfused muscle, close intra-arterial injection of acetylcholine. It produces muscular contraction similar to the elicited by the stimulation of a motor nerve. So, the amount of the acetylcholine usually 10 to 17 moles required to elicit the excitatory postsynaptic potential following its uh, micro inotic application to the motor end plate of red diaphragm muscle is equivalent to that required from fiber each fiber following the stimulation of phrenic nerve. So, whenever you stimulate the phrenic nerve, a, a quanta of the acetylcholine is released that is equivalent to 10 to 17 molars and upon activation of the receptor by acetylcholine, its intrinsic channel opens about 1 millisecond. Uh, during this interval, 50,000 sodium ions towers the channel. Means whenever the action potential comes in a cholinergic nervous system, the acetylcholine opens the channel, especially the sodium channel and about 50,000 sodium ions are coming inside. And the process is based for the localized depolarizing excitatory postsynaptic potential with the end plate which triggers the muscle, muscle contraction potential. So, especially in case of uh, skeletal muscles, it is very fast within a fraction of a second or within a millisecond the action is initiated, then the sodium is coming inside and potassium moving is outside. So, because of this thing ultimately it is going to have the contraction and here you can see the there is the release of the acetylcholine which causes the 
caused by depolarization of the nerve terminal. Depolarization occurs by as usual the sodium and potassium currents and depolarization makes the uh, what you call as the nerve twitching by the entry of calcium through voltage gated calcium channels then fusion of the vesicular membrane with the plasma membrane with the docking complex and release of acetylcholine and along with that ATP and other co-transmitters are extruded out via exocytosis. And following the section of de uh, and degeneration of the motor nerve to the skeletal muscle of the post ganglionic fibers to autonomic effectors, autonomic effectors, there will be a marked reduction in the threshold dose of the transmitters, certain other uh, drugs required to elicit a response that is called as the denervation supersensitivity. Please remember this particular thing denervation supersensitivity whenever the denervation supersensitivity is the increased sensitivity of a autonomic uh, fiber post ganglionic fiber whenever the nerve uh, the, is cut supplied to the skeletal muscle is cut and because of this thing the threshold is decreased to the neurotransmitters. So, that is known as the denervation supersensitivity means whenever you are denerved the sensitivity increases to highest extent that is known as the denervation supersensitivity. If you cut the, uh, the, uh, the nerve supply to the skeletal muscle then the neurotransmitters especially acetylcholine will elicit a very increased very much increased response that is known as the denervation super sensitivity. Here you can see this uh, how the denervation, uh, denervation super sensitivity occurs is uh, by the wherever this uh, uh, this is a presynaptic nerve terminal and there will be increased acetylcholine uh, receptor in the vicinity because of the denervation. And the degeneration uh, super sensitivity is going to occur whenever a nerve is cut especially in the up regulatory of the receptor because this there is the, the receptor subfamily will be increased and it is distributed throughout the synaptic cleft and decreased react uptake of secreted neurotransmitters especially here and the marked proliferation of Nicotinic acetylcholine receptor in motor and plate after denervation of the particular nerve which is supplied to the skeletal muscles. And uh, it is known as the denervation supersensitivity. Whereas in case of smooth muscles, no atrophy but hypersensitivity is seen, and the prolonged usage of reserpin, which is also neuro neuronal uptake depleter used in the increasing used in increased BP condition and stopping the hypersensitivity to norepinephrine especially it is uh, the, the reserpine is used as an anti hypersensitive anti hypertensive drug in a case of increased blood pressure and it is going to deplete the norepinephrine whenever it is released. The degeneration supersensitivity is in simply Whenever the nerve supply to a skeletal muscle is cut here, then the, the skeletal muscle becomes more sensitive to the release of the acetylcholine. That is known as the denervation supersensitivity, and this is because the what you call as the upregulation of the receptor and decreased uptake of secreted neurotransmitter. That is a, a very commonly occurring question denervation supersensitivity. And the autonomic effect of the cholinergic uh, uh, what you call as the stimulation is stimulation or inhibition of the autonomic fibers uh, on activation of muscarinic cholinergic receptor. Oh, so, in this case the effector is coupled to the receptors by G protein. G protein means uh, once again as you have already learnt in the previous classes once again the G proteins are classified into so many categories. In smooth muscle and the cardiac conduction, especially the cyanoarterial node, atrium, AV node, and his Purkinje system, 
normally the conduction is reduced and in contrast to the skeletal muscles due to the difference in the receptor. So, type of the receptors are M2 in case of the heart muscles are concerned whereas M1 in other tissue it is excitatory whereas it is inhibitory in case of the heart muscles. And a primary action of the acetylcholine in initiating these responses, uh, this effect through the muscarinic uh, receptor is brought about by the increase in the sodium and in some, uh, sub, uh, some instances calcium conductance. Hence, acetylcholine stimulates ion flexes across the membranes and mobilizes the intracellular calcium to cause contraction. So, how it is going to cause the contraction especially in case of the skeletal muscles, especially the muscles through the muscarinic uh, receptors is brought about by the increase of calcium, sodium and increasing calcium conductance, especially in case of skeletal muscle, calcium plays a pivotal role or key role in contraction, especially the calcium conduction. Hence, the acetylcholine stimulates ion plexus across membranes and mobilizes intracellular calcium to cause the further contraction. And what happens in case of heart? Because in case of heart, it is having the inhibitory action, decrease in the rate of the heart rate, etc. And the, the stimulation of cholinergic innervation, which is supplied through the vagus nerve, causes inhibition associated with hyperpolarization of the membrane at a marked decrease in the rate of depolarization because of the increased permeability to what you call as the potassium, increased permeability to potassium. That is how it is going to act. And uh, the autonomic ganglia, the primary pathway of the cholinergic transmission in autonomic ganglia is similar to that of the neuromuscular junction of the skeletal muscles. So, ganglion cell can be discharged by injecting very small amounts of acetylcholine into the ganglia. That is how it is being controlled. And here once again this is the anatomy of uh, that particular nervation, especially autonomic system supplied to the heart. Usually the heart is supplied with the cholinergic vagus nerve and also from several other cholinergic nerves by the varieties of the nerve. Of course, the cardiopulmonary splanchnic nerves are also going to be supplied with thoracic uh, lumbar vertebrae of the spinal cord. So, nicotinic cholinergic receptors which are ligand gated cation channels with properties similar to those found in the neuromuscular junction, especially the uh, nicotinic receptors are very similar to that of the neuromuscular junction and, and the uh, ganglionic transmission is highly complex process, especially in case of the cardiac muscles and several secondary transmitters or modulators either enhance or diminish the sensitivity of the post ganglionic cell to acetyl choline. So, there is a varied response of the post ganglionic cells in response to the acetylcholine. And this sensitivity appears to be related to membrane potential of the post synaptic nerve cell body or its dendritic branches. So, what happens especially in case of the pre junctional sites is the considerable attention has been focused on possible involvement of the pre junctional cholinoceptive sites both cholinergic and non-cholinergic transmission and the actions of the various drugs. So, the cholinergic innervation of the blood vessel is limited, especially to the heart. Activation of the muscarinic receptor results in the liberation of the vasodilator substances, it is also known as EDRF, endothelial derived relaxing factor or now it is very well characterized that is nitric oxide and this released nitric oxide diffuses to the smooth muscle and causes relaxation. This is how the relaxation especially in case of heart is caused by the prejunctional action of the acetylcholine. And now we will come to the cholinergic receptors and its subtypes and the signal transduction mechanism. And Sir Henry Dale is the first scientist noted the various esters 
of uh, the choline elicited responses that were similar to those of the nicotinic and muscarinic type depending on the pharmacological preparations. And uh, what the Dale, Sir Henry Dale suggested that acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter in the autonomic nervous system. That is very well established by Sir Henry Dale. But he also noted the compound had dual actions which the termed as the nicotinic action and the muscarinic action or muscarinic type action. So, in some places it is uh, it used to contract the muscles and some places it used to relax. That is why they assigned it as the nicotinic type of the response and uh, muscarinic type of the response. So, the capacities of the tubercularin, D-tubercularin, neuromuscular blocking agent and atropin, a specific uh, receptor antagonist, block nicotinic and the muscarinic respectively, whereas uh, the uh, atropin sulfate is not having any action on the skeletal muscles, whereas the uh, tubercularin, D-tubercularin is going to block the nicotinic type receptors and muscarinic type of the respect receptors respectively provided further support for the proposal of two distinct types of the cholinergic receptors. And further he also suggested crude plant alkaloids of Amenita muscaria, Amenita muscaria and nicotina tabacum or nicotiana tobacco. And it will note that the primary classification of the adrenergic receptor. So, alkaloids are derived from the two plants, one is Amenita muscaria and Another one is the tobacco plants that is the nicotinia, nicotiana tobacum, tobacum. So, both of these uh, were secreting the different uh, uh, chemical entities, one is the muscarin, another one is the nicotine. So, stimulation of the cholinergic nerves also was having the similar type of the action and hence it is noted as these are muscarinic and nicotinic type of the receptors. So, the sub what are the subtypes of the muscarinic receptors? There are many receptors, especially five uh, type of the receptors, already you know it very well, starting from M1, M2, M3, M4 and M5. So, the first three M1 and M2 and M3 are major, whereas the M4 and M5 are not so major. And uh, M1, M2, M3 receptors are present on effector cells as well as on the pre-junctional nerve ending and are exposed, expressed both in peripheral organs as well as in the central nervous system. So, this, uh, all these three types of the receptors are vastly distributed especially in case of peripheral organs as well as in case of the central nervous system. The M4 and M5 receptors are present mainly on the nerve endings in certain areas of the brain and regulate the release of neurotransmitter. M4 and M5 are mainly confined to central nervous system and regulate the release of the other neurotransmitters, especially the central uh, neurotransmitters like GABA, glutamate, glycine, dopamine, etc. So, here you can see the important subtypes of the muscarinic type of the receptors their location, nature, the transducer mechanism and agonists and uh, uh, antagonists because this we have to learn which gives the basic information about all the type of the receptors especially. So, the M1 type of the receptors are located on the autonomic ganglia and also in gastric glands and central nervous system. So, three places autonomic ganglia gastric glands especially gastric parietal cells and what happens is the action is depolarization especially late excitatory post synaptic potential occurs especially in case of st the stomach histamine is uh, going to be released because of the histamine release they are going to act on the H2 type of the receptors and acid is being secreted. Especially in the case of uh, central nervous system, learning, memory and motor functions are mediated by the M1 type of the receptor, whereas the it is the GQ type of the protein, means uh, excitatory type of the this thing. And uh, the transducer mechanism, especially inositol triphosphate, diacylglycerol, 
and increased cytosolic calcium takes place and the contraction takes place and also phospholipase a2 and uh, the prostaglandin synthesis are also increased in the other sites especially the uh, gastric glands etc whereas the agonist of this m1 are mc1343 a mcn343 a and oxtremorin these are the agonists of the m1 type of the receptor please do remember one or two examples mcn343 a and oxtremorin whereas the antagonists seek uh, are the pyrenzepin and telazepin so pyrenzepin is going to block all this uh, uh, many of the type of the receptors whereas the atropine blocks all the type of the subtype of the muscarinic receptors whereas the m2 it's uh, going to decrease the hyperpolarization or hyperpolarization rate of impulse generation especially to uh, rate of impulse generation is decreased whereas in case of the av node decreased velocity of the conduction and in case of atrium especially shortening of the duration especially the uh, action potential duration and uh, the decreased contractility occurs in case of the ventricle decreased uh, contractility slightly decreased and the receptor are the spare receptor pars receptors and and cholinergic nerve ending there is a decrease in the acetylcholine release whereas in case of central nervous system uh, tremors analgesia in visceral smooth muscles contraction will occur the especially m2 are very specific to that of the heart that's why all these uh, things are related especially how it's going to act on the sa node av node atrium ventricle especially in the cholinergic nerve ending and in case of cns uh, this thing the central nervous system there is uh, tremors and analgesia they are all thing especially in case of the uh, muscles of the smooth muscles visceral smooth muscles are going to be contracted with that of the uh, m2 type of the receptors yes then the nature of the proteins involved are the g inhibitory or go protein coupled receptors whereas the transducer mechanism is potassium channel opening and decrease in the cyclic kmp mechanism hence relaxation occurs the agonist is methacholine is a specific agonist of the m2 type of the receptor and the antagonist is methotramine and uh, triptyramine these are the specific antagonists of the m2 type of the receptors whereas the m3 type of the receptors are located on most of the visceral smooth muscles uh, muscles and there is a uh, the function is contraction of the smooth muscles especially on the iris constriction of the pupil ciliary muscle contraction exocrine glands secretion vascular endothelium release of nitric oxide and there will be vasodilatation whereas the proteins which are responsible for the actions are the gq type of the proteins and the mechanism involved is same to type that of the m1 type of the receptor is increase in the stimulation occurs in acetyl triphosphate and diacetyl glycerol they are going to increase the cytosolic calcium and uh, the phospholipase a2 is also going to increase the pg synthesis whereas the agonist is bethanicol then antagonist is solifenacin and darifenacin these are all the antagonists especially the m3 type of the receptor and coming in detail with the m1 is primarily located on uh, case of ganglionic cells and central nervous system as as here we have seen autonomic ganglia gastric glands especially central nervous system and especially in the cortex hippocampus or corpus striatum it plays a major role in mediating gastric secretion relaxation of lower esophageal sphincter uh, caused by vagal stimulation and in learning memory and motor functions etc so the cardiac uh, muscarinic receptors are predominantly there 
the muscarinic 2 type of the receptor, especially the M2 as you have already seen and the 2 receptors on cholinergic nerve endings are also M2 type of the receptors and smooth muscles express some M2 type of the receptor activity. Whereas the M3, the M3 type of the receptors are present on the visceral smooth muscle and especially the iris, the gland, they are present M3 type of the receptor which also mediate vasodilation to EDRF or nitric oxide and uh, together the M2 and M3 receptors mediate most well recognized muscarinic actions including contractions of the smooth muscle thus that is the very characteristic type of the muscarinic type of the receptor is contraction or excitatory. The muscarinic receptors are G protein coupled receptor already it is now. The M1 and M3 and also the M5 function through GQ type of the protein and activate membrane bound phospholipase C PLC generating inositol triphosphate or IP3 then diacylglycerol will be produced and this will turn the release of calcium intracellularly and uh, this causes the action potential causes the depolarization, glandular secretion, raise smooth muscle tone and release of nitric oxide from the endothelium. It is because of this thing it is known as endothelial derived relaxing factor. Coming to the subtype of the nicotinic type, in case of M1 type of the receptors we know M1, M2, M3 and M4 and M5. M4 and M5 are very much confined to the central nervous system whereas the M1 is very specifically it is uh, present on the autonomic ganglia cells then also central nervous system whereas the M2 is present in case of the heart whereas the M3 is present in the peripheral visceral organs and also in certain organs like the iris or eye etc. And, uh, the subtypes of the nicotinic receptors are selectively activated by nicotine and blocked by D-tubocurorin or hexamethonium, hexamethonium or also D-tubocurorin, DTC. So on the basis of the location and uh, selective antagonists and antagonists, agonists and antagonists, two type of the uh, classifications have been done. NM type of the receptor and NN type of the receptor. So, the NM type uh, is not this uh, narrates these are present at the skeletal muscle. Muscle NM means it is referring to muscle uh, and Then NM type of the receptors are present at the skeletal muscle end plate and are selectively stimulated by phenyl trimethyl ammonium PTMA and blocked by deuterocurarin. So the NM type of the receptors are very much present on the skeletal end plate and are selectively stimulated by phenyl trimethyl ammonium PTMA and blocked by DTC and they mediate skeletal muscle contraction. And in this particular uh, table you can see the subtypes of different type of the receptor NM which uh, contains alpha 1, 2, beta 1, delta and gamma. And uh, the main synaptic location is skeletal neuromuscular junction and the membrane responsibility is excitatory whereas it is inhibitory in case of the uh, what especially in case of molecular mechanism increased cation permeability to sodium and potassium and the agonists are acetylcholine, nicotine, then the succinylcholine, NM type of the receptor succinylcholine, whereas the antagonists are atracurium, veracuronium, ETC, d tubocurorin pancuronium, alpha-conotoxin and alpha-bungrotoxin. So, these are all the details of NM type of the receptors whereas the peripheral NN type of the receptor 
NN means autonomic ganglia and adrenal medulla. It is present NN type of the receptor. Whereas uh, the excitatory in nature, NN type of the receptors are excitatory and depolarization and firing tip of the especially muscle. Then Peripheral uh, uh, nervous system, it is containing the NN type of the receptor and central neuronal uh, receptors, especially they contain the alpha 4, 2, beta 4, 3 and alpha B tox in, uh, intense, insensitive receptors. This is present in case of the what you call as central nervous system and pre and uh, post synaptic excitation will occur which is caused by increase in the permeability to sodium and potassium very similar to that of the NM type of the receptor. So in case of central nervous system the cholinergic once again subtype of the receptor are alpha and 5 and alpha B tox sensitive and it is present in the central nervous system and also it is present in case of pre and post synaptic excitation will occurs and the pre-junctional control of the transmitter release. So increased permeability to calcium occurs here whereas the, and the agonist is anatoxin A whereas the antagonist is methyl canotinine. So here one thing we can say that this NM type of the receptors are present in case of skeletal neuromuscular junction or the end plate and always it is excitatory and the agonists are acetylcholine, nicotine and succinylcholine whereas the peripheral NM type of the NN type of the receptors are present in the autonomic ganglia and adrenal medulla two type of the this thing and they are all the excitatory in nature whereas the coming to the M type of the muscarinic type of the receptor there are once again five, type, five subclasses M1, M2, M3, M4 and M5 whereas the M1 is present especially in case of the central nervous system and also autonomic ganglia and some of the glands especially the gastric and salivary glands and many of the enteric nerve is also consisting of, of the M1 type of the receptor. So as usual uh, we have also it is acting through inositol triphosphate, diacylglycerol and increased calcium influx because of this thing and uh, the functional response is increased cognitive uh, function becoming increased seizure all these activities are going to see and decrease in the dopamine concentration. The clinical uses of this M1 type of the receptor agonists are used in case of the Alzheimer's disease, the cognitive dysfunction and schizophrenia. So this is uh, used, these the agonists are used. There is the M2 type of the receptors, the chromosome is having 466 amino acids it is widely expressed in case of the heart and also brain, thymus, central nervous cortex, hippocampus, heart, smooth muscles and autonomic nervous ganglia. So this is also the inhibitory GI or GQ type of the proteins are there. Uh, of course there is a decreased cyclic AMP concentration then uh, Phospholipase C activation, the decreased inositol triphosphate and increased potassium output, inwardly potassium output and ultimately it is inhibitory in nature. M3, it is uh, more number 590 and M4 4, M5 receptors are containing 532 amino acid. Whereas the M3 type of the receptors are present especially in case of central nervous system and the smooth muscles especially of the glands it is going to increase the concentration uh, contraction of the glandular smooth muscles. So as usual the uh, cellular response is increased in acetyl triphosphate, diacylglycerol and calcium this is the pathway and the disease, uh, disease uh, in which this M3 type of receptors are in which the chronic obstructive pulmonary disease it is also known as COPD chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and urinary incontinence especially 
in case of the geriatric patients and irritable bowel disease or this is the improper movement of the bowel and causes alternate diarrhea and constipation that is the irritable bowel syndrome whereas the M4 type of the receptors are especially important in case of Parkinson's disease and also in case of schizophrenia and neurophenic pain, neuropathic pain. And the M5 type of the receptors are especially they are located in case of central nervous uh, system and this is uh, especially having the significance of drug dependence in case of Parkinson's disease, Parkinson's disease. And cholinergic neurotransmission occurs like uh, already it is dealt cholinesteltransferase and acetylcholinesterase. And the uh, cholinesteltransferase finalizes the uh, final step in synthesis of the acetylcholine A. And acetylcholine A from pyruvate via pyruvate dehydrogenase action in mitochondria at junctional terminals, whereas the choline is reuptaken after its release from the detection of acetylcholine. So as usual, once again this is a revision pericarion to the external terminal and also cytoplasm. So choline ester transferase will be present which, which combines the acetylcholine with that of the acetylcholine which causes the acetylcholine neurotransmitter. And the choline transporter or CHT1 is a homologous sodium dependent glucose transport family and it is located in the intracellular or intravascular structures and co localizes with VAMP, it is also known as vesicle associated membrane potassium 2 and vascular acetylcholine transporter that is the VCHT. During transmission release events, increased trafficking of CHT1 or the choline transport to plasma membrane and takes up the choline after the acetylcholine hydrolysis and increased acetylcholine stores to maintain high levels of the transmitter release. So in the nerve endings the choline is transported in the vesicles which contain them and ready to release at any time. How choline is transported is so, choline many times it is available in the diet of a human being or any animal and essential for normal functions of the cell and it maintains the structural integrity of a cell signaling functions of the cell membrane and the, the transport mechanism is sodium independent transport system and sodium and uh, the chloride dependent transport system which is predominant and uh, provides choline for the acetylcholine synthesis and the choline transporter CHT1 it is also homologous to sodium dependent glucose transport system very much specific whereas it is located in case of the intracellular vascular structures then it uh, what you call as co localizes with the vesicle associated membroprotein and also vascular associated transporter and during transmitter release increased trafficking of CH1 to plasma membrane and take up the acetylcholine at, after acetylcholine hydrolysis because the choline is the one which is important metabolite that is produced after the destruction of acetic acid into choline or acetaldehyde into cho and choline. So, there is increased acetylcholine stores in maintain high levels of the transmitter release. Always it will be ready for the further release. And the storage of the acetylcholine occurs in case of the cytoplasm and transported into synaptic vesicles by VACHAT using proton electrochemical gradient. <coughs> the proton comes out of the vesicles and acetylcholine moves it because it is a energy dependent concentrated in gradient across movement and two types of the vesicle. So in case of storage vesicles there are two types one is electron the lucent vehicles and second one is a dense core vesicles the two type of the vesicles. 
and the content of these uh, vesicles are acetylcholine and uh, co-transmitter ATP, vesiculin or it is also known as proteoglycan, glycan and peptides especially PVIP, vasoactive intestinal polypeptides. So these are all the uh, ingredients of that particular vessels and uh, during the exocytosis process all these are released acetylcholine, ATP, vesiculin and peptides or the vasoactive intestinal polypeptide as you have already learnt in the previous classes. So along with this uh, acetylcholine the co-transmitter are also released and they are going to act on the postsynaptic vesicles and single motor nerve terminal is single motor terminal single motor terminal is uh, going to act on uh, contains about 3 lakh or more vesicles single motor nerve terminal contains about 3 lakh or more vesicles and each vesicle is having 1000 to 50000 acetylcholine molecules say 3 lakh storage vesicles and each is containing 1000 to 50000 the acetylcholine molecules that means you can see how much quantity of the acetylcholine is released and immediately after release it is going to be metabolized in a flash like action then it is going to be reuptaken in some places and also the choline is reuptaken and also some extravascular cytoplasmic acetylcholine is also present and please remember all this uh, figure the single motor nerve terminal contains 3 lakh ves uh, the, or more vesicles and each vesicle is having 1000 to 50000 molecules means very huge quantity of the acetylcholine will be stored in the nerve ending and uh, whenever an action potential comes very huge quantity of the acetylcholine is secreted and the acetylcholine is released by the depolarization of the nerve terminal and the calcium entry through the voltage gated calcium channels and the fusion of the vesicular membrane with the plasma membrane occurs because of the calcium then release of the acetylcholine and co-transmitters via exocytosis this is a normal process and the molecular me mechanism of the acetylcholine release is the acetylcholine is stored in storage vesicle at presynaptic membrane and they, it is ready to be released at appropriate stimulus then it is uh, activated by the docking uh, complex and priming up of the vesicles because docking complex is very much required for the fusion of the synaptic vesicles then priming means maturation of that particular follicles uh, this uh, vesicle occurs and then multi protein complex attaches the vesicle plasma membrane the example is syntaxin synaptobrevin snap 25 and all these are known as the docking complex and because of the docking complex action then fusion of the vesicles and release of acetylcholine by exocytosis occurs then pools of acetylcholine will occur it is a depot readily releasable one especially readily releasable pool and contain newly synthesized acetylcholine and uh, the depolarization uh, causes the rapid release of, of the acetylcholine and uh, the reserve pool contains replenishes the uh, depot pool which is present in the nerve endings and sustained acetylcholine release during prolonged nerve stimulation occurs because of the reserve pool of the acetylcholine because unlike this norepinephrine and other thing it is not stored acetylcholine is not stored anywhere in the any organ of the body whereas the uh, norepinephrine is stored as in the name of the adrenaline or epinephrine is converted to epinephrine and stored in the adrenal gland because to face the fright or flight reflex and the acetylcholine esterase is one of the important enzyme because it is going to remove the acetylcholine neurotransmitter after its action is over so at neuromuscular junction 
immediate removal is uh, required to prevent the lateral diffusion and to prevent sequential activation of adjacent receptor so bundles of receptors are present in the same vicinity and uh, of course uh, if the acetylcholine is dissipated then there is chance that the other receptors are also activated and less than a millisecond is required by the acetylcholine uh, esterase to hydrolyze the acetylcholine into acetic acid and choline and we will see some of the tables here the characteristic distribution of the acetylcholine esterase which is containing it is also known as true choline esterase whereas the butyl choline esterase is also known as the pseudo choline esterase and the distribution of acetylcholine esterase is present everywhere all cholinergic sites and rbcs and the gray matter of the brain whereas the butyl choline esterase is uh, present in plasma liver intestine and white matter and especially the plant originated esters will be detoxified by the butyl choline esterase and the hydrolysis of acetylcholine is uh, very fast whereas the butyl choline it is very slow and sometimes uh, this is uh, asked especially the difference between the acetylcholine esterase and butyl choline esterase uh, so the methacholine it uh, especially slower than that of the acetylcholine whereas it is very slow in case of butyl choline esterase and the benzyl choline not hydrolyzed by the acetylcholine esterase whereas it is hydrolyzed by the butyl choline esterase and the butyl choline both butyl choline and benzyl choline both of these are hydrolyzed by the butyl choline esterases and the inhibition uh, of this uh, acetylcholine esterase more sensitive to physostigmine whereas the butyl choline esterase is more se sensitive to organophosphorus compounds and the function is termination of the acetylcholine once the termination of acetylcholine action occurs after the action of acetylcholine esterase whereas the uh, butyl choline esterase is going to do the hydrolysis of ingested esters which are present in the food. Uh, this is the same type of the diagrammatic representation of course we have seen so many diagrammatic representation for 3 or 4 but once again we are going to see this particular diagrammatic representation once again is because the here you can see the from the mitochondria the acetylcholine gm is released whereas because of the sodium inflow the choline is uptaken from the uh, exoplasmic uh, membranes and the hemicholinum is the one which is going to block this thing and uh, the acetylcholine is formed and uh, acetylcholine is uptaken into the nerve terminals which is inhibited by the vesemicol then the calcium is uh, uh, coming inside the exoplasmic membrane and uh, makes the acetylcholine etc to fuse with that of the exoplasmic membrane and many of the proteins are called as the uh, what you call as docking complexes and uh, with the help of the calcium the vesicles are going to be fused with one another and the massive release, uh, release of the acetylcholine occurs. So it is going to act on the presynaptic nicotinic acetylcholine receptors and uh, muscarinic elect, uh, uh, receptor muscarinic M, M2 and M4 type of the receptors whereas the synaptic cleft lot of acetylcholine is released and with the help of the enzyme acetylcholine esterase enzyme it is going to be broken down into choline and the acetaldehyde and the nicotinic receptors are present on both the presynaptic and postsynaptic junctions so postsynaptic junctions the type of the receptors are m1 m3 m5 whereas it's also m2 and m4 type of the proteins are also present which uh, are going to increase the phospholipase c and excitatory response is there whereas the g inhibitory response is by m2 and m4 type of the receptors so uh, ultimately inhibitory action will be seen whereas the nicotinic type of the receptors open 
the sodium potassium channel and it is excitatory in nature and this is also a similar type of the chart which we have studied already then similar uh, type of the things are uh, explained here where is the acetylcholine is uh, uh, acetylcholine is uh, will be that of the coe and acetylcholine is formed with that of the choline acetyl transferase enzyme then synaptic vesicles are fused to release acetylcholine and it is broken down by the acetylcholine esterase to form the choline and acetate and the cholinergic receptors are m1 m2 m3 m4 5 whereas nn and nm type of the receptors see the overall structures of the nicotinic uh, type of the receptors is also here uh, the this is a trans helical structures which are showing the structures of the m1 type of the receptor m3 m2 and m4 and here different type of the proteins are associated with that of the receptors and acetyl binding site acetylcholine binding site is having the five variety of the proteins alpha beta gamma epsilon and delta whereas the alpha and beta are important and also the amino acid varieties of the amino acids are present in the binding site so that the acetylcholine binds properly with that of the receptors of course the ion channels associated uh, with that of the uh, varieties of the receptors especially the the ion channels varieties of the ion channels like uh, the amino acids very many type of the amino acids are also present on the ion channels especially the related to the muscarinic 2 type of the receptor and uh, the leucine ring will be present in between and uh, the negatively charged ions are participating and whereas the nm my nicotinic type of the sub, uh, receptors are classified and it is containing adults are containing alpha 1 alpha 2 and beta epsilon and delta as it is shown in the earlier whereas the fetus do contain alpha 1 and alpha 2 type of the receptor the location of nm type of the receptor is skeletal nosomuscular junction and post junctional usually it is always excitatory and uh, the skeletal muscle it is always contraction is going to occur and the mechanism as usual increased uh, cation permeability sodium and potassium and depolarization occurs the agonist is acetylcholine nicotine and succinylcholine whereas the antagonist is atracurine vero vacuronium d tribocurorine and many pancuronium alpha conotoxin and bungarotoxin nm type of the receptors are present on the autonomic ganglia and adrenal medulla so adrenal medulla is innervated by the cholinergic nerves and during the fight or flight reflex it is going to stimulate the adrenal medulla and release the uh, secretion of catecholamines and excitatory it is in nature and uh, the depolarization firing of the fourth ganglionic neuron and as usual the mechanism is due to the increased cation permeability sodium and potassium and the agonist acetylcholine and uh, the nicotinic this then antagonistic is tri trimethophan and megamelamine these are the antagonists whereas the another type of the receptor especially in the central nervous system these receptor subtypes are alpha 4 to beta 4 3 and alpha b tox insensitive so the location of this receptor is central nervous system and uh, the correct location is in both pre and post junctional type and the response is pre and post synaptic excitation will be seen and pre junctional transmitter release is obtained and the mechanism involved is increased cation permeability especially sodium and also the potassium the agonist is uh, cytosine and the antagonist is mecamelamine same to that of the earlier thing m n n, n type of the receptor and lophotoxin is one of the toxin which is also antagonistic to the central neuronal receptors 
of course uh, this is also anatoxin and uh, alpha bungarotoxin all these are also present on the uh, they are also in the going to inhibit whereas the central neurotransmitters apart from the earlier thing it's also alpha 7 and 5 alpha b tox sensitive uh, uh, one the receptor it's a receptor and the response is pre and post synaptic excitation which is going to increase KTN permeability to calcium and the agonist is anatoxin A whereas the antagonist is methyl co methyl conatine and alpha bungarotoxin and alpha conotoxins. So muscarinic receptor R very simply they are denoted as M A C H R and the G proteins and their specific uh, actions like G protein, G stimulatory, G inhibitory, G O means inhibit the calcium uh, channel and the action especially the G stimulatory, it activates the calcium channels and activates adenyl cyclase whereas the G inhibitory activates potassium channels and inhibit adenyl cyclase and G O means inhibits the calcium channel, G Q activates the Phospholipase C, it is also excitatory. G12 bar 13, it is a diverse on ion transporter interactions. And these are all the structures of the receptor structure, G protein coupled receptor. So, it is uh, these, where, uh, these are all the sites where the binding site of the neurotransmitter is there, and also most of these are the G protein receptors, especially. So this is the site where the agonist is going to bind and there is GTP GDP exchange above the G protein activation will be there and accordingly alpha beta gamma they are going to separate and GTP is converted to GDP ultimately the molecular mechanism starts. So, activation of action they are by GAS very similar to it is by the phospho kinase protein kinase A phosphorylation and activation of phospholipase C by GQ this phospholate uh, inositol transpose phosphate is converted to uh, diacyl glycerol and inositol triphosphate inositol triphosphate releases the intracellular calcium and calcium is going to ha having the coaction with protein kinase C and protein phosphorylation occurs whenever the neurotransmitter binds with that of the receptors. So, the location of this muscarinic type of the receptor as usual it is already dealt and uh, the central nervous system, hippocampus, triatum, M1 and autonomic ganglia, glands and enteric nervous system. In case of glands, it is going to increase the secretion, whereas in case of central nervous system, it is activating the phospholipase C and the cognitive functions and seizure activity is uh, are increased, whereas the dopamine is getting decreased and uh, as especially in case of the glands, the depolarization occur and increased secretions and the diseases in which it can be uh, used is schizophrenia and Alzheimer's disease and cognitive dysfunction, a psychological disorder. Whereas the M2 type of the receptors are located on the thalamus, most of the central nervous system apparatus like thalamus, cortex, triatum, hippocampus, heart, smooth muscles, autonomic nerve terminals. So especially the M2 is located on the heart, especially we are concerned about the heart even though it is vastly distributed in case of central nervous system. Since the vagus nervous nerves innervate the heart and the type of the receptor involved is the M2, we are very much interested. So the inhibitory action is uh, uh, due to the G inhibitory or G O proteins inhibit, inhibit uh, inhibits the AC, then decreases CAMP, activation of the potassium channels and hyperpolarization and inhibition. Whereas in case of the heart, sinoatrial node slowed spontaneous depolarization and uh, hyperpolarization occurs due to the uh, potassium channel opening and uh, EV node decreased conduction velocity atrium decreased contraction and 
whereas in case of smooth muscles of the uh, few of the organs it is going to increase the contraction whereas the peripheral nerves it is going to neuronal inhibition via auto and hetero receptors and increased ganglionic transmission and especially in case of central nervous system neural inhibition and increased tremors and hyperthermia is going to cause and the it is uh, having some of the importance is especially in case of Alzheimer's disease and cognitive dysfunction and also neuropathic pain. M3 type of the receptors are widely distributed in case of central nervous system, the cortex, hippocampus, smooth muscles and glands and heart some type of the receptor. So cellular responses yes it binds with GQ11 and activates phospholysis C increased interstitial triphosphate and the diacyl glycerol, increased calcium, PKC and depolarization occurs and excitatory photosynaptic potential initiates which activates the PLD2 and phospholipase A. Then the functional response of this M3 stimulation is increased contraction and the predominant especially in case of bladder and the glands increased secretion, the food intake will be increased increased fat and body weight inhibits the DA release and synthesis of nitric oxide. Diseases are COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases and urinary incontinuous and irritable bowel syndrome. M4 type of the receptor most of them are in the central nervous system. The cellular response is by GI and GO just inhibitory in nature. So the analgesia, catalepsy, etc. are mediated by the M4 type of the receptor whereas the Parkinson disease, schizophrenia and other thing they are all also mediated by M4 type of the receptor. M5 once again as usual it is uh, especially location located in case of central nervous system. Uh, so once again it is couples by GQ11 activates PLC it is excitatory in nature and dilatation of central artery, cerebral arteries, increased dopamine release and increased drug seeking behavior and opioids. Especially the diseases in which it is important is the drug dependence, Parkinson's disease and schizophrenia. And the release of the acetylcholine and other neurotransmitters by exocytosis through the prejunctional membrane is inhibited by the uh, clostridium toxins and some of the most potent toxins known are produced by the microbe. Clostridium toxins inhibit synaptobrevin and related proteins in the nerve terminal and internalization in turn enables the small subunit of uh, the proteolytic synaptobrevin or other target tissues. Whereas the botulinum toxin A binds to polynergic motor nerve terminals giving rise to flaccid paralysis.